When you're photographing sushi, you're sushiing. Should coin that phrase, sushiing. That word is rock and roll. Hello everybody, welcome to Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. And today we're gonna be sushiing with the Nikon macro lens. What I mean by that is we're gonna be shooting some sushi with the Nikon 105 macro lens. I love food, I love photography, so sometimes I make videos combining the two. Who doesn't love a good sushi spot? I'm gonna show you where you can eat the best sushi at a reasonable price, but this place has very tasty sushi. One of the best spots, and believe me, I've had sushi all over America, actually. Never been to Japan. If you guys are familiar with Huntington Beach, California, in Southern California, it's a really, really touristy kind of spot, really cool, young people hang out there. You know, they like to drink, party. It's a nice beach community in Southern California, Orange County. And uh, the place is called Sushi on Fire. All right, guys, it's on fire, Sushi on Fire. So that's the place we're gonna hit up today. Uh, take some pictures with, like I said, the macro lens, the Nikon macro lens. And I'll be showing you some sample images Kind of getting hungry right now, so let's go. Let's rock and roll. I got the lens, the camera, ready to walk on over to the spot. But first, a little history on the city of Huntington Beach, California. So, according to Wikipedia, Huntington Beach is a seaside city in Orange County in Southern California, located 35 miles southeast of downtown Los Angeles. The city is named after an American businessman, Henry E. Huntington. All right, enough of that. It's a really cool town. It's got a really awesome pier. And, you know, young people partying, bars, restaurants. Uh, it's just a great place to visit. Huntington Beach is known for 10 miles of sandy beaches, mild climate, and, of course, excellent surfing. The city hosts professional surfing competitions here year-round like i said many bars many cool restaurants on the main drag which is main street there's even a cool little spot by the pier where drummers and hand drummers sit there and they play hand drums drums you name it a lot of talented guys and gals come here play those drums on the sandy beaches of huntington beach oh and let me tell you about those bonfires there's fire pit locations located all across the beach at specific areas where people just hang out, light a fire, and just have fun with friends and family. It's a very upbeat, rockin' city. A lot of young crowd, college crowd come in. A lot of locals here. Hey, check this out. You guys watched that movie Big? The Zoltar Machine right on the pier. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And yes, I tried it. I made a wish. Nothing happened. I didn't turn to a kid but still rock and roll. But anyway, the city's cool, good vibes, good party vibes, nice place to exercise. Oh yeah, and the cops are strict here. Wear a seatbelt while driving, don't play loud music in the car. The parking is strictly enforced all day, even on Sundays, so watch out for that. Anyway, on to our sushi spot, Sushi on Fire. The restaurant is located right on Main Street. It's hard to miss with indoor and outdoor dining. Start off with a little Misho soup, as you see there. Here's the menu, uh, reasonably priced sushi. They got a lot of specialty rolls and the traditional rolls that we all love. And they even got a rock and roll roll. Check that out, rock and roll. So what I like to do is get the wasabi with soy sauce and a little ponzu sauce, mix it around. That's my secret right there. Next time you're having sushi, try that out. Let me know what you think. So we got the lens ready with the camera. The first off, the sear tuna. The sear tuna is rocking over here. That's probably my favorite piece of fish at this place. Anyway, on with the pictures. Uh, right here, I am probably at around F10, uh, shooting with the 105 and uh, ISO 800. Did some adjustments in Lightroom, you know, brought out the color a little bit, vibrant, you know, exposure, you name it. On with the other rolls. This roll is amazing, the spicy white fish something. I forgot what it's called, but. And this is the house special. It's called the Kent special. I don't know who Ken is, but he has a good taste. <laughs> look at that. Just look at the quality of this lens. Look at all the details of the fish and the avocado there, the rice. 
I'm telling you, it's a real advantage when you're doing food photography to use a macro lens as well. It just brings out all the little details like, like crazy. I mean, this is food photography on the go. I'm just having fun here. Obviously, this is not a professional environment, which I'll talk to you guys about a little later in this video. But I just wanted you to see what the 105 macro can do. Obviously, you're restricted when you use this lens. It's always good to have another lens, which I'll go through in a minute. Uh, however, oh, this roll was pretty good too. I forgot what this one was called. But it's got the shrimp tempura inside, spicy sauce on the side there. And like I said, this is an affordable sushi restaurant. Obviously, I'm not talking about those places that are like $50, $60 rolls which are amazing and I've been to some of those places as well. However, for the average price kind of sushi, this place is probably the best place I've had in a while. That was great. Yeah, guys, there's so many ways you could shoot food photography. Yeah, so I just wanted to give it a shot with the macro lens, take some pictures of food, some sushi. But if you're doing food photography, macro lens is probably not your go-to lens. Something to shoot wide, not super wide because you don't want to distort the food, but something wider, something that close focuses. So it really brings out the detail of the food without distorting the picture too much. So something like a 24 to 70 is ideal for food photography. You can also zoom in. However, it could work as well. If you want that super fine detail that a macro lens brings you, you can do that. But always have a variety of lenses, like a 24 to 70 and a macro lens. A combination of those two lenses would probably be the most ideal if you're doing professional food photography. I'm not talking about like if you're just reviewing a restaurant, reviewing food like that. I'm talking about professional food photography. If you're doing professional food photography, you wanna light the food. You wanna light the food professionally, in a professional manner, uh, maybe in like a studio environment. If you like videos like this, guys, and you want more, all things photography, photography tutorials, camera and lens reviews, photography business tips, you name it. Like and subscribe to Bahography, guys. Again, I wanna thank you guys for watching. This is Bahography, I'm Bahagen. You're a rock and roll photographer. And remember, rock and roll. Oh.